So with anything, with homeschool, there is, like I said, an entire spectrum of ways to do it, and there is no one right way. So don't let anyone ever tell you that this is the only way to do it, or this, I promise you this is gonna work, because not only is every curriculum different, but every child is different and every parent is different. So you have all these different factors that play into your homeschooling experience. That's gonna change it. On today's episode, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of what homeschooling my third grader has actually been like now that we are officially in summer break and I have survived about four months of homeschooling amidst a move on all of these things. So let's dive into the realities of homeschooling in 2024. So the homeschooling episode that we did was actually one of the most popular ones, and I had so many DMs and friends texting me about it, saying they were thinking about homeschooling themselves, and they're so glad that I shared some of those resources with them. Um, But I think uh, amongst the general public, like homeschooling is on the rise, and we know this, and I kind of talked about this before, but it's becoming more and more popular every single year because we just start to see all the failures of the school system in our faces once your children get a little bit older year after year. And it really is dependent on the area you're in and on the school system that you're set aside, or if you can afford private. Um, And here in Hawaii, I mean, private school is easily, you know, 10,000 plus a year, which is a huge addition if you're not already having a high cost of living. So for us, homeschooling made sense. Um, Like I said, my third grader just finished third grade. We're going into fourth grade. And then my little one, my four-year-old, We just pulled her out of preschool, um, and she has another year of preschool technically before she starts kinder. But uh, moving into next year, kind of what I'm going to do is just continuing the same thing I've been doing with my older son. Um, And then with my little one, I'm not going to do curriculum with her, but she is very eager to learn right now. And she really loves tracing. She loves pretending to do school. And so as long as she has that natural craving for it, I will absolutely, you know, foster that and give her worksheets and stuff, but no formal curriculum for the four-year-old at this time. So for the nine-year-old, let's kind of review where we've been and where we're going. So when I started, I definitely did my due diligence of research, but I wouldn't say like crazy OCD style. Like I got a sense of what's out there in the world today in forms of technology and workbooks and different curriculums. Um, And I ended up falling on the good and the beautiful for language arts and math and actually really love the program and all the books that come with it and the tools that they send and stuff. Um, But it is a workbook. It is a formal workbook. So if you are someone that is thinking you're going to unschool and have like no curriculum, you don't need those workbooks. But for me, and I think for my husband too, we wanted some peace of mind that we were moving the needle forward. And I had structure personally as the teacher because I think if I did nothing I would constantly be like, you know, what if thing my whole day, <laughs> like my brain and thinking I wasn't doing enough. So at least this gives me enough traction to say, hey, we can do a little bit here, a little bit there, but it's not, you know, eight hours of school a day. And realistically, in this season of life, like homeschooling would take us anywhere from an hour to two hours max a day. And that's including 20 minutes of reading plus the workbook of language arts, which takes about 30 minutes. And then the math usually takes us the longer anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour. Hey ladies, real quick, if you are looking for a mentor, I just wanted to remind you that I offer mentorship to entrepreneurs. So if you're someone who has a never ending to-do list and you're spiraling out of control and feel like your business doesn't have a track plan, I wanna work with you every single week for a month at a time super simple, but I come from over 10 years of experience doing this myself, and now I'm willing to give that information back to people. So I've mentored real estate agents, I've mentored wedding photographers, I've mentored other business owners, and they've come from a place of overwhelm mostly, and they really just needed clarity and a couple of action steps to move the needle, and we've seen gigantic leaps and bounds in their business, like I can't even tell you. So if you're interested and you wanna know what that looks like, I want you to go to marinatolentino.com, And there's a Calendly link there to do a 15 minute discovery call with me just to see if we're a good vibe check to make sure we're on the same page. And I would love to work with you one on one to really boost your business to the next level. Let's dive back in. And I have to say the biggest thing that takes the most time is honestly the attitude. So parents of elementary kids, you know, attitude is everything. And we are learning every day how to be better parents about it. But a friend had shared with me um, this podcast called the Calm Parenting Podcast. And it's been so helpful in just speaking to exactly what we're going through. And it's a power struggle more than the content a thousand percent. So 
The material is not an issue. He can learn it very easily. It's very much at his grade level and learning level. And when we, when he's focused and he's willing to like get down and do the work real quick, I mean, he can do a whole lesson in 15 minutes. It's amazing. It's like a freaking miracle. But most days there is a lot of power struggle going on. And so I have learned through listening to the Calm Parenting podcast that most of the issues come from my freaking self, (laughs) which is frustrating, but also very relieving and freeing to know that I can change myself. I, and we know this about our, like, just like with life, we can't change our spouses, right? But we can change ourselves. So if I can approach schooling differently, and if I can let go of so many expectations of the way that I want him to do things and allow him the time and the space for him to do things the way that he wants to learn, then there is so much better balance between us, but I just have to bite my tongue constantly because of course he's going to do things different. He wants to do it laying down. He wants to do it upside down. He wants to break five pencils in this this session. Like he's just very much a very high energy active boy where I'm just like, can't you just sit down and like do it? And it just doesn't work that way. So we've come to some days where I like the power struggle happens before we even open the book. Like the power struggle is happening. I don't want to do school today. And so we went outside one day and I did multiplication drills while he shot the basketball and it was great. And he had a blast. And then he asked to do it again the next day and the next day. And so I've learned he's very much a kinesthetic learner and he needs to be moving his body to do this without fighting. If I ask him to sit at a desk, like instant tears. And it's not even, I am like the most patient, graceful person with him. Like my husband cannot, but I have intentionally been so calm and so patient and he still gets so emotional and so power struggle that I've just learned to accept, okay, this isn't working. Take the cue and move on and do a different way. Try it a different way. Um, Sometimes if I try to teach a lesson through reading the workbook prompts, it's not working. Then I'm like, okay, just full stop. Let's do a YouTube video and I'll find something that's engaging about the topic on YouTube that will catch his attention. Then we come full circle. Okay, now we do a little lesson practice together. Um, So, so much of homeschooling is being adaptable and flexible to the day, the hour, and the mood of your child because no day is the same. And that goes to say with the schedule too. We don't have like a set time that we do school every day. It's like if I've got a full morning of Zooms, then we're going to do school in the afternoon or vice versa. If I've got a full afternoon or evening, then we're going to bust out school first thing in the morning. And then because school only takes about an hour to two hours a day, most of his time is spent playing, literally what kids are supposed to be doing. So the screen is just not on, the TV is not on, he's outside, he's riding his bike, he's playing basketball, like I'll give him the little Bluetooth speaker and he'll just go ham for 45 minutes to an hour shooting hoops with some tunes on. Um, around the afternoon time, all the street kids come out and they're, like, they'll are like they play outside for four to six hours nonstop in the sun, just running around and running amok. And that is where so much of the interaction goes on, the socialization goes on, the learning goes on. Um, and it's just been so good to see him have fun and like take off all the restriction and limits that he used to have. Like just um, with family that we have visiting, they have like four or five sports teams that they're a part of and they like, school full time, right, with public school. And so they have no free time. And it's just a complete night and day difference of our schedule where we've intentionally made freedom for our kids to just be and just interact and do what they want to do and explore different things creatively. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt. And I hope you're enjoying this episode of the work like a mother podcast real quick. I just want to remind you guys, if you are worried about missing an episode, you don't have to worry anymore because we are creating a weekly email that's going to go out automatically every single time there's a brand new episode. And this email is going to have everything you need to know about this week's featured guests. It's going to have all of the links and the resources that we're going to talk about in this episode. So you don't have to go around and fumble through the show notes, but it's going to be served in your inbox every single week. So if you guys want that access, be sure to click below one time in the show notes today, sign up for that email, and then you'll never have to worry about it in the future. And bonus, if you really love this, we'd love it if you share this with a friend, give us a review on whatever platform you're listening to, and we'll continue to bring new episodes new information that's going to help you level up your life every single week. Um, and so I think it's been really good. It's, it's been a transformation of mindsets. Absolutely. hundred percent from when I started in March to where we are today in June. Um, and so going into next year, I think I'm going to continue with the current curriculum that we have, which is good and beautiful. So I'll get the fourth grade set. 
Again, just for language arts and math, they do have other subjects like science and arts and all these things. But honestly, I love keeping those an open option and not feeling like I need a third workbook. Like the two workbooks is enough for this grade level. And we're doing science all day, every day, just through doing life together. So that whether that's through cooking, baking, he's baking with me, um, whether that's farm life, whether that's um, just taking care of the house or whatever, like he'll help Ryan with the cars. There's a lot of learning going on that's not in a book that I feel is sufficient for this age. However, obviously, once we get into middle school, there's some more functional things he might need to take on. Maybe we, you know, do some other things. We have experimented with Me Academy, which is spelled M-I Academy. Um, I heard rave reviews from a couple of parents, but for my son's learning style, he's such an impatient learner that he didn't like that it was making you, like, pass the test or whatever the quiz to get to the next lesson. So he'd, like, jam through and not read the things and then be frustrated. And then it was a whole thing where he was smashing the computer. And I was like, nope, this isn't working. (laughs) So we pulled Me Academy temporarily. Um, but I think we could always go back to it if we hit a season where he can enjoy it more. Um, I did enjoy Me Academy's typing program. Uh, that was good for him to just get some more experience with his finger placements and doing the ASDF and all of that as a third grader. I think we'll continue that just for Me Academy, just the keyboarding part of it. But if we get to a pace where he does have curiosity to learn more or a subject that I'm not good about, then we can get there. But for now, like I totally have peace of mind to just skip that and just do the basics and knowing that life will take care of the rest at this moment. Um, So with anything with homeschool, there is, like I said, an entire spectrum of ways to do it. And there is no one right way. So don't let anyone ever tell you that this is the only way to do it, or this, I promise you, this is going to work because not only is every curriculum different, but every child is different and every parent is different. So you have all these different factors that play into your homeschooling experience. That's going to change it. Um, I have another friend who runs like a tight ship curriculum and it sounds very intense to me. It's like eight subjects and it's a full school year and they have breaks and all this stuff. That's not us. Like, honestly, I would say four days out of the week, we hit our mark of where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing in the book. And then the three days is like flex days. So maybe like on a Friday, I have a full work day. So that means I'm not able to do homeschool. So we're going to do it on a Sunday. Or honestly, maybe we just skip it. Like I'll be reading through some of the content. And if it's just a repeat, it's trying to review the lesson again and again for a couple of days. If Roman can pass that and like, I don't need to drill it into him anymore. I'm like, are you good? You're good. You got this. And I'll like quiz him. Then we just skip five pages and we go forward. Like that's the freedom of being the teacher is you get to decide what and when to teach all the things. Um, So I think there's just been so much more grace added to my plate moving into next year, which has been huge. But it's, it's just accepting where you are in life. Like that's the full thing. Not trying to fight it. Not trying to force anything. We're not trying to hurry up. There is no hurry in this whatsoever. And really just getting back in tune with your children. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, And the support from the homeschooling moms online has been huge. Like anytime I post a little glimmer of homeschool life, like the moms come out in forces and they're just like, you're doing so good. Like imagine what this can be like in two years from now. Like you're only on six months in, like it gets better and better and better. And that has been so encouraging to just keep going. So if you are on the fence of exploring homeschooling, I definitely recommend talking to more moms who are doing it. Because I haven't heard one grumble yet, honestly. (laughs) Like the moms that are doing it love it and for good reason. So that's going to wrap up today's episode. It's a shorty, but just a little update on homeschool life. Fast forwarding from when we started in March to now June and moving into fourth grade and the four-year-old now at home. I am so excited. So I hope that encourages you to keep learning, keep researching. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you guys have questions and you want to know, you know, what I've learned or what resources we're using today how our schedule looks like I'm an open book all the time. So I look forward to hearing from you guys and we'll see you on another episode.